April 11, St. Gemma Galgani, also known as the Flower of Luca, who is a virgin and a mystic. Gemma was born in the year 1878 in Camiano, Italy, as one of eight children of devout Catholic parents. Gemma's father worked as a chemist, and Gemma's mother taught her children to reflect on spiritual matters often, especially Jesus Christ's crucifixion and what it meant for people's souls. While she was still a girl, Gemma developed a love for prayer and would spend lots of time praying. Gemma's father sent her to a boarding school after her mother died, and teachers there reported that Gemma became a top student, both academically and spiritually. After Gemma's father's death, when Gemma was 19, she and her siblings became destitute because his estate was in debt. Gemma, who cared for her younger siblings with the help of her Aunt Carolina, then became ill with meningitis that grew so bad that she became paralyzed. The Gianni family, who knew Gemma, offered her a place to live, and she was living with them when she was miraculously healed of her ailments on February 23rd in the year 1899. Gemma's experience with illness nurtured a deep compassion within her for other people who were suffering. She interceded often for other people in prayer after her own recovery, and on June 8, 1899, she received the stigmata wounds, the crucifixion wounds of our Lord Jesus Christ. She wrote about that event and how her guardian angel helped her to get to bed afterward. At that moment, she said, Jesus appeared with all his wounds open, but from these wounds there no longer came forth blood, but flames of fire. In an instant, these flames came to touch my hands, my feet, and my heart. I felt as if I were dying. I rose from kneeling to go to bed and became aware that blood was flowing from those parts where I felt pain. I covered them as well as I could, and then helped by my angel, I was able to go to bed. Throughout the rest of her brief life, Gemma continued to learn from her guardian angel and pray for people who were suffering, even as she suffered from another illness, tuberculosis. Gemma died at the age of 25 on April 11th in the year 1903, which was the day before Easter. Throughout her life, Gemma reported that she often communicated with her guardian angel, who she says helped her pray, guided her, corrected her, humbled her, and encouraged her when she was suffering. Jesus has not left me alone. He makes my guardian angel stay with me always, Gemma once said. A priest who served as Gemma's spiritual director wrote about her relationship with her guardian angel in his biography, The Life of Gemma Galgani. Gemma saw her guardian angel with her own eyes, touched him with her hand as if he were a being of this world, and would talk to him as would one friend to another. He let her see him sometimes, raised in the air with outspread wings, with his hands extended over her, or else hands joined in an attitude of prayer. At other times, he would kneel beside her. In her autobiography, Gemma recalls a time when her guardian angel appeared while she was praying and encouraged her. I became absorbed in prayer. I joined my hands and moved with heartfelt sorrow for my countless sins. I made an act of deep contrition. My mind was wholly plunged in this abyss of my crime against my God when I beheld my angel standing at my bed. I felt ashamed of being in his presence. He instead was more than courteous with me and said kindly, Jesus loves thee greatly. Love him greatly in return. The three miracles the church documents for her sainthood are as follows. The first involved an elderly woman who had been diagnosed by doctors as terminally ill with stomach cancer. When people placed a relic of Gemma on the woman's body and prayed for her healing, the woman fell asleep and woke up the next morning cured. Doctors confirmed that the cancer had completely disappeared from her body. The second miracle happened when a 10-year-old girl who had cancerous ulcers on her neck and left side of her jaw, which had not been successfully treated with surgery and other medical interventions, placed a photo of Gemma directly on her ulcers and prayed. Gemma, look at me and have pity on me. Please cure me. Immediately afterwards, doctors reported the girl was cured from both the ulcers and cancer. The third miracle that the Catholic Church investigated before making Gemma a saint involved a farmer who had an ulcerous tumor on his leg that had grown so large that it prevented him from walking. The man's daughter used a relic of Gemma to make the sign of the cross over her father's tumor and pray for his healing. By the next day, the tumor had disappeared and the skin on the 
man's leg had healed back to its normal state. Numerous other miracles have been attributed to Gemma's intervention in prayer after her death in the year 1903. If I saw the gates of hell open, and I stood on the brink of the abyss, I should not despair. I should not lose hope of mercy, because I should trust in you, my God. A quote from St. Gemma Galgani.